speaking with Talit uh, Ibn Ra and you know he has a movement slash ministry by the name of the Reality Temple on Earth and I had the pleasure of speaking with him for several hours today and I think it's only fair that I do a reaction video to um, the conversation and the conversation was on various topics, which was basically centered around African quote unquote consciousness. And um, he was a real, real deep brother, very down to earth, very approachable. He didn't carry himself like a know it all. Someone you could talk to and really listen to you. Um, it was such an honor to finally meet somebody over the internet that has a ear to listen and not only an ear to listen, but will take full action on what they stand for. And I appreciate it having that conversation with you and I do look forward to working with you. In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Reality Step on Earth Internet Ministry. I am the host of this particular program, the most powerful voice on social media. There is no doubt about that. <laughs> I am known as the mighty, 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 mm, angel snub number seven, your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. So how can you, how can you be the most powerful voice on YouTube? How can you be the most powerful voice on social media? There must be something in what I say on YouTube over 100 channels terminated. There's a reason for that. I don't curse people out. I went to court with Google. They could not prove that I am an author of hate speech. So what is it? What is it whereas I am so targeted and I'm a person, they say, I don't get a lot of views, but clearly the little views that I do get is very threatening. They don't want anyone 
anyone to listen to Angel Snub Number 7. Why is that? Because there is power in the voice. And regardless to your skin color or your gender or your economic status, wherever you find yourself in life, if you listen to what I say, you don't have to agree. But if you, but if you, but what, but if what I say causes us to think, and that's what they don't want the masses to do, is think. When the people or the masses begin to think, then you become a threat to the establishment that depends on you being a fool, non-thinking, a zombie, a modern-day mental slave. And that is why anything that comes from this rostrum is a threat. With that said, you challenge this wisdom and you will find out yourself why I am indeed the most powerful voice on social media. There are many who have followed my work. And some of you know and don't like how I speak about police officers and black soldiers. Any soldier, not just because they are black. Soldiers and police officers. Many African American or black soldiers, Negro soldiers, they get very upset with me how I speak about their military service. They believe that they should be praised. Salute the truth. They should be praised for their military service. Praised for their military service to a nation that has yet to give you true freedom, justice, and equality. That allow the murderers of your sons and your daughters to go free and have a happy life. This is what you're fighting for. You're fighting for the freedom so that these persons who deny justice to you continue to do that. That's foolish. That's stupid on your part. Why should I praise you for helping an oppressor? A very simple and quick example. You have chickens that live with a fox. The chickens help the foxes fight off any type of threat to the fox. But then the fox turn around and want to eat chickens. But the same, <laughs> the same chickens that would help the fox fight Whoever is threatening to harm the fox, the same chickens that would give their lives to save the fox won't give their lives and do nothing to save the chickens and they are chicken themselves. That is why I'm not going to praise black soldiers. I'm not going to praise soldiers, period. Not in this day and time. Because a soldier is nothing but a robot. A soldier is nothing but a zombie. A uh, soldier is nothing but a tool for those who have become corrupt and don't have the best interest of the citizens of the nation or the soldier, him or herself. A soldier is told, you don't question orders, you just carry those orders out. Who are giving you these orders? Somebody that has a good heart, righteous heart, someone that is really standing on something, that you should defend? No. And we know this. But we should salute the truth. We should praise the soldier. I'm not going to do such a thing. I'm not going to praise a robot. I'm not going to praise a zombie. This, this tool that can be used by those in high places. The soldier defending not your freedom, but the property of the rich and the infamous. 
And the masses of the people don't even share in the wealth. In fact, the people themselves are slaves. You have an organization called Black Lives Matter. And they gathered by the hundreds, maybe the thousands in the street. However, the black police officer is called. And if things get out of hand, the black soldier might be called. I would praise you if you had the, the gumption, you had the nerve to say, look, I'm a black man. I'm a black woman. I cannot take a gun. I cannot take a billy club. I cannot take any kind of arms against black people. Those in that movement called Black Lives Matter. I can't do that. So I would politely, I need to step aside. I need to recuse myself from the situation. There's a conflict of interest because these are black people. And I'm a black man. I'm a black woman. So although I'm in the military, you must respect this. I cannot do that it's a conflict of interest here. But you won't do it. You will be a black police officer and you will be a black soldier and you will take your AK-47, you will take your Beretta and you will begin to shoot down and kill it and murder those who are in that Black Lives Matter protest if you are given the order because you don't question your order. You don't want to be charged with insubordination. So you, you are really talking to the wrong person. You think I'm going to salute not a troop, salute a fool in a military uniform. Because you are, you are a dang fool. You stupid. I'm not going to praise you. And you have yet. You will die. And you will obey, obey the order and protect the best interest, the interest, the vital interest of a nation that hung your fathers and our ancestors in trees. Sick dogs and spray fire hoses on our babies and continue to give our people injustice in their courts. And they still discriminate in housing and employment. You can ask Tim Wise, who is a Caucasian Jewish man, about those statistics. According to Tim Wise, he says that the housing and the employment, all these things are even are worse than they were in the 1960s. But you are so busy trying to get into some woman's panties. You want to go to the latest Jay-Z concert. Go see the latest movies and get drunk and high. You don't even know what's going on. I'm not going to salute no truth. You're not defending any freedom. You're dying protecting somebody's oil. Or these suckers trying to get some oil from somewhere. Or free labor. Or whatever they're trying to get. They use you because you are a non-thinking fool. You're a soldier. And most of you are not patriotic. Because if you was patriotic, everything that you do, you would question because you giving your life for the nation, for the citizens of this nation, the people. You want to make sure that you're not giving your life for Exxon or McDonald's or any of these large corporations that have all this lobbying power and you have none. You're just a tool. And some of you want to be praised when the only reason why you're in the military is for the money. That's all. It's a money thing. And you want to be saluted, praised. If anyone that should be praised is the deserter. Anyone that should be praised is the one who can think for themselves and look at the leadership and see that the leadership is corrupt 
using them as a tool that think they, that, that think they are a zombie, that think they are a robot. I'm not your robot. I'm not your tool. I'm not your fool. If you, if somebody told you that you could use me, somebody done told you wrong. It's not happening. Salute the truth. They are protecting our freedom. You tell me who, what freedom you talking about? You are free in this nation. You just finished celebrating Thanksgiving. You was free to do that. You're getting ready to celebrate Christmas. You're free to do. Who's threatening? Who's stopping you? Who's threatening your freedom? Those who are not free are incarcerated. Those who are not free are locked down. You're able to express they're fighting for your freedom. Who is trying to lock you up? Who's trying to take that away from you? I don't see anyone threatening you. However, I do see that you go to their house threatening them, stealing from them, lying to them. And you the soldier, you the police officer, you won't praise because you're a good house slave, regardless to your skin color. You're a slave. You're a guard dog. Sick them. Sick them in Afghanistan. Go, go sick them. Sick them in Iraq. Go sick them. Like you're a dog. And if that's how you want to live your life by being somebody else fool to be by being someone somebody else's tool, that's your business. In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Reality Step on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I am the gatekeeper or the host of this particular program, known here on social media as the mighty, her mighty, mighty, mm. Angel Snuffin' Up 7, I am your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. I would like to spend the next few minutes on this video speaking about this great leader, this great man, this great inspiration, this prince of black liberation, I want to speak about our brother of whom we will never forget. This brother known as Malcolm X or Malik Shabazz. When I was a member of the Nation of Islam under the leadership of Louis Farrakhan, I was taught as a young person to hate this man. I did not know who Malcolm X was. I did not know his history at all. And the little that I did know, I was taught by the Nation of Islam, the version created by Louis Farrakhan. Unlike so many people, I am a self-thinker. I don't take information and just accept it based upon 
how you give it to me. I want to examine and handle it myself. Why do you want me to hate this man? Well, he was a traitor and he betrayed the nation and our leader, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And you do love Elijah Muhammad, don't you? This man betrayed Elijah. Upon my own research, my own examination, I found something very, very different. And there was anger from among many of the membership that followed Louis Farrakhan towards me because I did not agree with their calling this man a hypocrite. I did not agree that this man was a traitor. And the reason why they view this man, this brother, as a traitor is because they are blind followers and they were not real. And they did not really represent truth. This man, to the best of his ability, represented truth. And even gave his life because he stood on the truth that Elijah Muhammad claimed that he represented. And many of you, there are thousands of you who claim you love this brother, Malcolm X. You claim that you are inspired. You use his picture to represent you on social media when you know you are nothing close to being Malcolm X. Because if you were anything anywhere near a Malcolm X, thousands of you that worship and praise this man you would have evolved and you will continue his work and you would have freed our people, liberated yourselves years ago. But you're still begging. You're still throwing up black power and African power and all this other stuff. You have not evolved from the time of Malcolm X. Malcolm would have left you a long time ago. Malcolm was in the streets while you sit at home behind a computer punching buttons. You're not like Malcolm X. You're not real like Malcolm X. You're too damn lazy. Malcolm X for years once he got this word that awakened his mind he became a different person Whereas he became celibate, I think for 12 years, I believe. Maybe a little less, a little more. He did not care about sleeping around and getting in some woman's panties. The only thing on his mind was black liberation. Freedom from a vicious oppressor. But y'all not real like Malcolm. You're a bunch of sex fiends, porn addicts, screaming black power and liberation. Many of these men use this so they can exploit sisters. We know this as a fact. That was not Malcolm X. He was not interested in Sister Betty, but she kept putting herself in a position, and he is a man, where finally... He gave in and was attracted to this woman, but his real love was this fight, this struggle for black liberation. He was a disciplinary type man. According to the coroner's report, when they cut his flesh in the autopsy because of one meal a day, fasting. His flesh was so clean. 
we could cut some of y'all flesh and a hog maw will come out of your skin. I don't eat pork. Well, it'll still be greasy. You're nothing like Malcolm X. Malcolm X stopped chasing Caucasian pink women. Y'all scream black power, black pride, and you still chase Caucasian women. You find Caucasian women attractive. Black power family with your Caucasian woman around your waist. This man stopped doing drugs. There was a reason for that. Some of y'all smoke weed and you get high and you get drunk. You don't like Malcolm? Some of you do because Malcolm X was real and you're fake and you're phony. I want to make something very clear to some of those of you who really don't know Malcolm X and the history of the nation of Islam. One thing that is for sure, this brother loved Elijah Muhammad. One thing for sure, this brother, Angel Snup Nup 7, I love Elijah Muhammad. And Elijah Muhammad told us, Elijah Muhammad told us to stand on truth, regardless. So even if Elijah himself decided to steer away from up, out of the realm of truth, then we still stand on that truth. We cannot be loyal to Elijah because it is truth that will set you free, not Elijah Muhammad. Do you know and could you imagine how it hurt Malcolm X? To speak the truth about his leader, teacher, and God. He loved him, but truth supersedes Elijah or anything else. And they murdered him. Religious zealots murdered Malcolm because he spoke the truth. He was not telling lies. Elijah Muhammad was a 60 year old man. Messing around with young uh, children compared to his age. If Elijah Muhammad, his being the last messenger, he could have wives. Why didn't you tell your people? Why didn't you tell the followers this? It had to be revealed. It was in secret. Why didn't you just tell us? Then myself and, and Malcolm we could have made a better decision whether or not we want to follow you or not. But you told us and gave us and painted a, a whole different scenario and story. You were different from the Christian preacher, but then it seems as though you're no better than the Christian preacher. Exploiting your women followers for your own purpose. You told me and you told this brother stand on truth. And I will do the same thing. Elijah Muhammad stopped brother Malcolm from developing and growing. Because although he loved Elijah Muhammad, Malcolm had his own mind. He was, he was his own creative soul. And Elijah Muhammad always said, stop. Don't do this. Stop, stop. Why do you want to stop this man? Who is working to do whatever he can in order to liberate a people. Why? Because you want the credit. You, you already getting the credit. I'm doing this in the name of Allah and his messenger. You're already getting the credit. But since it's not coming from you. Malcolm was a self-thinker. I would say that Malcolm, had he lived, he would have let Islam go. Because Malcolm X would have realized that anything under or have a religious base is made to enslave a people, enslave the mind. Anything under religion is an enslaver. Religion cannot liberate because religion was designed to enslave. Religion was designed to control 
And I am very sure had Brother Malcolm lived, he was only 39 years old when he was murdered in front of his children and his wife. And some of these demons, they find pride in that. He was an unarmed man. Malcolm got what he deserved. And you won't get what you deserve. Because had this brother lived, who knows how much he could have helped the black community. And you. Some of you claim that you are inspired. And you love this brother Malcolm. But you don't love him enough to continue his work and become like a Malcolm. Y'all are cowardly. Lazy. You waiting around for Malcolm to come back from the dead to save you. You deserve to be a slave. Because you've had some of the greatest teachers, some of the greatest examples. But you don't want to do nothing. You wait on somebody else to do the work. And then you can enjoy what happened. The, the freedom that is gained. You're trying to avoid death. Since you are historians, then you know there's nowhere in history where an oppressed people became liberated without the shedding of blood. It's almost impossible. Liberation has a cost. This brother paid a price because he told the truth because he was real. And if he was alive today, you would not like him because you a bunch of fakes. And you would take his picture down because you know that he would know that you are fake. You can't represent a Malcolm X. You would die in the army for the racist devil. But won't die and shed not one drop of blood for your own black self. So you need to really take Malcolm's picture down. You're nothing like this man. I wish to be like my brother Malcolm. In the name of my ancestors, Peace forever and always and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I am Angel Snub Nub 7 and that's what I'm known here on social media. The mighty, mighty mm, Angel Snub Nub 7. I'm your brother. And hopefully your friend, Tali even wrong. I'll tell you something that I really have a problem with. I'll tell you something that I really personally dislike and you should also. I am very insulted when someone and even threaten when someone tries to force their idea, their philosophy, their way of life on me. And the reason why so many of your religions exist is not because people embrace them. It is because soldiers Guns and knives and torture. These things were used to force Islam and Christianity and many of these religious belief systems on the people. If you rejected or said that you did not believe in these things, you could be murdered or tortured. I do not 
try to force my idea, my opinions, or my beliefs on anyone. I only present that opinion to you and you can take it or let it alone. And I will defend that position. That is not trying to force anything on you. I could care less as real truth has been presented to you. I do not talk based in emotion. Before I open my mouth, I have spent a long time thinking, using common sense and logic and reasoning, being analytical, taking apart whatever the particular subject matter is. This is why many of you find yourselves, you cannot rebuke, you cannot debunk anything that I present to you. Not really. Some of you believe you have done it, but you have failed. Because I don't just come out here bringing you something based on emotion. A lot of thought has gone into what is presented before it's given to you. It must pass the criteria of common sense. It must pass the criteria found in the examples in the natural world that we live in, this reality. It must pass the criteria of logic, reasoning, and being analyzed. So the subject that I bring to us today, the same thing has been done to that. My subject for the next 10 minutes is single family versus family. Do you know there really is no difference? Do you know why there is a family? The reason why you have family is because in nature when you have the female and the male if they stay together it is a survival strategy more so than anything else in nature among mountains you will see a mother bear alone. She's a single parent. Have you ever seen a homosexual bear? The male bear has nothing to do with the raising of the cubs. In fact, if the female is not careful, the male bear will eat the cubs. The moose is another mammal. And the female raises the calf alone. The male is solitary. The only time he comes out and interacts with the female is strictly for reproduction purposes. However, some mammals have found if the parents stay together, the survival of the babies, the mortality rate becomes lower. So this is the purpose of family. The purpose of family, the purpose of community, that it is simply a survival strategy. So now I go back to, well, let me say this also. The human being is a mammal. Any life form that feeds its babies with mammary glands is called a mammal. So the human being is a mammal. So when you look out at nature, for example, in order to understand the reality 
or the nature of ourselves, we can look out to nature to give us an idea of what we should be because clearly in nature there is no similar. In nature there is no cow's milk in a bottle. This is something that is unnatural so we carry many unnatural behaviors, unnatural ways. Now going back to how I began this video speaking about forcing things upon people. Religious teachings have embraced the family unit and that is all well and good. But I do not like when somebody because they have found that's good for them. They want to force their lifestyle on others because in nature there is nothing wrong with a female wanting to raise her babies alone if necessary. And she is just as so much of a family as those who have a male, a female having a male helping her. There is no difference. Well, a female can't teach a male how to be a male. The female bear, the female moose, has had no problem raising male moose, male bears. In fact, no female animal has a problem with raising male offspring, but for some reason, the human being female who is, who have evolved higher than these animals, for some reason, she's incapable of raising male children. Why is that? You tell me, and this question has yet to be answered. You tell me specifically what can a male teach a boy that a female can't teach? Explain it to me. Well, my daddy takes me to hockey games and teach me how to shoot a gun. There are many women, should they choose, they can teach you how to shoot a gun. They can take you to hockey games. A lot of women are interested. That's the only difference. A lot of women are not interested in sports. They're not interested in wrestling and fighting and all these different things. Men and women, male and female, we find or have different interests. But besides that, there is nothing that you can show me that this female cannot teach her male child. She can teach her male child responsibility. She can teach her male child how to respect women. She can teach her male child about African black culture. Whatever a man can do, she can do it. There is nothing. You should stop trying to force your idea of life on others, especially when nature says this can be done and it can be done successfully. In fact, actually, a man cannot teach a boy how to be a man. That's natural. Just like going to the bathroom, taking a leak. You should not have. I heard a brother say and told us on Facebook that he had to teach his young boys how to go to the bathroom and take a leak. Now, you may be able to show somebody a better way, a little bit, not to be so nasty when you go to the bathroom, but you should be able to go to the bathroom. Any animal, any life form knows how to use the restroom. You did potty train your, your, your children, didn't you? It's very silly in our thinking. It's also good because we do have different interests. That women have a camaraderie with women and young boys and men. <clears throat> they have a camaraderie. But as far as the actual raising and the teaching of a child, it is not the, it is not the quantity of parents that is important. It is the quality. And it is easier. It is easier to have two parents in the house. It is easier, of course, common sense tells us, that it is better to have 
two paychecks coming into the house rather than one. But, how, but however, if that other paycheck causes stress, if that other paycheck makes the other person an inferior, is abusive, and brings problems to the family, then that paycheck needs to stay wherever the hell is at. Some women find it is more comfortable, easier and better that I do this alone. It is better to be by yourself than in the company of a fool. So I don't need no man in my house who's a fool. I do this by myself. And some women bring men into the house but she don't want to be married to them. And that's cool also. That's nothing but a ritual. There are many people who are not married that raise strong, wonderful children. Just as good as anybody that has a piece of paper talking about I'm married. So what? We really need to stop trying to make slaves out of other people. You do what you feel is good for you. And you allow other people to do what they feel is good for them as long as it doesn't bring harm to you. Does not cause any damage to you. How does a single woman? Well, because she don't know how to raise her children, she produces killers and they rob and steal. You have people coming from two parent households who do the same thing. In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I am the gatekeeper, the host of this particular program, known here on the internet as the mighty, 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 mm. Angel Snub Nub 7, I'm your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. Within the confines of time awarded to me upon this particular video, I would like to speak with Caucasian or pink people just for a few minutes. Now, this is your time to uh, bring forth your opinion and interact, and you have been invited. Most times, they don't ask to come to your channel. They just come from out of nowhere and wish to force their opinions upon you. I often wonder, why do pink or Caucasian people, why do they come to black channels or black pages or Facebook or they come into an environment, first of all, you was not invited. Second of all, you can see clearly that the channel, the page was created to, to speak with with descendants of slaves having dark skin born in America. That is the audience that I'm seeking. That's who I'm trying to speak with. If I wanted to speak with everybody, then that would be clearly seen. So I question your intent because history tells us that Caucasian pink people never have good intentions. It is always to deceive, spread lies, trick, harass, that type of thing. So I even question your intent. 
they come to your channel with a holier than thou attitude like they've done nothing to nobody. Now, as an individual, perhaps you have not caused harm to nobody, but you come from a people, you come from a nation that has caused great harm to these who have dark skin born in America and you continue to cause problems all over the earth. You are the original terrorists. But when it was Caucasian people doing the terrorizing, it was called colonialization. It was called exploration. It was called doing God's will. Now that those of whom you terrorize, those of whom you cause harm to, they fight back in the best manner that they can, they are called terrorists. I'm very sure I could easily be called a domestic terrorist. And you can call me and do whatever you wish. Now, with that said, Mr. Caucasian person, Mrs. Caucasian person, your problem is you believe that black people, African American, Negro, whatever you, however you have described us, because certainly we did not place this upon ourselves. African American came from Jesse Jackson, uh, I think in the 80s or late 70s or something like that, whatever, but it's that's, it's, it's a wrong description. But however, you think that we are still your slave. You think that all black people want to kiss your backside and we're stupid and we would do anything to love you. I'm not interested in loving you. I'm not interested in wanting to be in the bed with you. I'm not interested in being your whore. However, when you come this way, I will be just to you. I will be fair with you. I will be honest with you. Something that some other black people are not interested. They want you dead. They want you destroyed. So at least I will give you justice. Something that you deny us as a people. I don't have to trust you. I don't have to treat you kind, really. Trust must be earned. And actually, you're a bunch of hypocrites. You say one thing and do another. You cannot be trusted. You want brotherhood, but you don't want to earn trust. This nation and its people have done nothing to rehab and make whole the people you destroy. And when somebody tries to, you don't like the fact, you think that we're getting something for free. How are we getting something for free when we have been mistreated for over 400 years? Given this country and nation 400, 300 years of free labor, over 100 years of underpaid labor and have suffered some of the most wicked treatment that a human being could be made to suffer. So how are we getting something for free? Well, you never was no slave. That's one of the first things they tell you. My response is, you have the state of Israel right now that was created in 1948. Hitler and the Nazi party fell a long time ago, years prior to 1948. However, Germany pays the state of Israel reparations to this day, and the state of Israel also gets other welfare from other countries. Those, the majority of those who live in Israel did not suffer in a so-called holocaust. Nor did the Germany that's paying the reparations, they had nothing to do with the Holocaust. 
It was the nation. But because Germany as a country, as a nation, has some type of honor, some type of morality, they are trying to heal the people that they cause harm to. Unlike the United Snakes of America have done all this great evil to black people, you have no honor, you have no conscience. You have no morality, although you have churches and mosques, synagogues all over this nation. You have no honor, unlike Germany, because of your deep hatred for dark-skinned people. Especially, I don't know, for some reason, as loyal, as loving to you, as black people in this nation have been and continue to be, you have this hatred. For dark skinned people born in America. But you said I wasn't a slave. But it's called being a beneficiary. I don't have to be an actual slave. Just like those people in Israel. The majority of them are not Holocaust survivors. They are beneficiaries. When your mother died in a car accident. When your father got cancer because he worked on this site that had asbestos or whatever. You don't have asbestos. You didn't die. Why are you getting paid? It's called being a beneficiary. And to continue to destroy your pitiful fake argument, then you said only real slaves should get reparations. Well, you did not give the real slaves nothing. And you make this argument because you know all the real slaves, actual physical slaves, they are all gone. So you make this argument because you know they are dead. However, you still have Jim Crow. You had men and women who were lynched. You had children that were sprayed with water hoses and bitten by dogs that suffered in Jim Crow. And you have black people, even myself, who lived through Jim Crow and what is called the black codes. We are alive right now. And you don't suggest that we get any kind of reparations for the suffering. The state of Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, nobody has to pay nobody anything. You don't suggest. And this shows how you are a hypocrite. You think black people are stupid and you wonder why you can't be trusted. And I want to conclude this video by speaking about black consumerism. Black consumerism is a bad thing. I want to make perfectly clear that descendants of slaves having dark skin born in America, we should inspire and we should encourage our children and even older people if they want to own a business and they want to do something to serve the black community or, or any people in this nation. Fire at reality simple.